Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to walk through the process of how to create a virtual exhibit. Now why would you want to create a virtual exhibit and exactly what is a virtual exhibit? Well if we go over and look at the County of Brant Public Library we can see on their Vita page they have quite a few exhibits that they have created. And you can see from the title that these exhibits display different collecting items from their collection, in this case um, Christmas in Burford, development of the water power industry in Paris, early settlers of Bethel and Brant County. Let's take a look at that and see how that looks. So as you can see, you have an image loaded here. You have the caption on the bottom which gives contextual history about the image. You have some text and they have created several pages. So we're in the introduction page right now. Let's see what the beginning looks like. So again, they've got more photos and they've created a two used, um, sorry, they have chosen a two column display and we'll cover the different layouts that you can choose from when we get into creating our exhibit. And they have early settlers, so they've got several pages attached to this exhibit and we'll walk through how to create those. Well, let's go back and take a look at another one. If you happen to have more photographs than you do text, then you can use a gallery view and they have done this with historical buildings of the county of Brant where you can see they have a little bit of um, text up here but it's mostly about the photographs, the images. Now the one thing about virtual exhibits to keep in mind is that when you create a virtual exhibit you're not creating the record of the image you're using. You already have done that at some point down the line which is why it is useful and probably good practice to put your images or your records into groups. So presumably uh, Brandt has gone and created a group of historical buildings when they were creating their records and when they went to create their virtual exhibit all they had to do was pull the images from that group so everything has been aggregated for them. So if you click on Charles Douglas Smith House it's going to take you to the record for this image which may have been created at the time of the exhibit but more than likely you've gone and done it at some point down the line beforehand. So all their metadata is in here, their subject headings, they've mapped it, they have their copyright statement. So it's you, you create the record for this as you would any record, it's just the virtual exhibit is a kind of a separate record you're creating to contain everything that you want to put in it. Okay so let's close off Brandt page for now. And this is a virtual exhibit I created um, just a little while ago. Now I've chosen my layout and we'll walk through how you do that. I only have one page right now but we'll walk through how you can add more if you wish. And what I've done is I have got my text but I've stag staggered my images and I've chosen a black background because I just felt it made my old po post postcard sorry, pop a little bit more on the screen. Okay. So let's close that off and we don't need that. So let's get down to creating our exhibit. So the first thing you'll notice on the left hand side is your dashboard, your entries for creating records. Now normally we'd be working up here or down here for dealing with publications, newspapers, but we have here different links to take us into specific workflows. In this case if you're adding or updating a group in this case we want to create an exhibit so I'm going to click on that and the first thing I want to do is create an exhibit title old maps of Ontario okay now I'm creating the record for the exhibit remember the records that I'm going to be pulling the images I'm going to be pulling to create this exhibit have already been created and I put them in a group so instead of working on the workflow up here like you normally would our workflow for the exhibit is down on the left hand side here. So right now we're going to create the full record metadata. I want it on public display. Remember that the indexing cycle for Vita is anywhere from a half hour to one and a half hour. So depending on where you are in the cycle will dictate how quickly your record will be viewable on the public side. We already have our media type selected for us, exhibit. Now you want to indicate your secondary media type. In this case I'm dealing with images so I'm going to choose image and my item type I am dealing with maps so I'm going to pop that in there. There's my title. 
Now I'm not going to put in a creator name and role, it's not um, appropriate for what we're doing right now, but if you were say creating a, an exhibit for an historical society or maybe they're coming in and doing it on Vita for you or you're working with different community groups and you want to indicate who is creating this exhibit and the role they're playing in it then you can use these fields just remember that this is a viewable field on the public side so don't put any information in there that you wouldn't want viewable by the public now subjects again these fields all work the same no matter what item you're creating. So we want to pop in that we're dealing with atlases and we are dealing with historic Bruce Township so I'm going to pop that in and maps and any other item or subject heading that is appropriate. Remember these are fully searchable. Now if you want to add a subject that is not there if you go to type in up here and it doesn't pop up you can add it to the source down here. Just remember to update your record before you move away so that the subject heading or the new subject will be linked up here. Personal names. Now if you were dealing with postcards like I did earlier in my other exhibit you could put personal names in here. Again only use fields that are appropriate to what you're creating. Now description. Again if you're unsure about what goes in this field as opposed to notes just click on the little help icon and it'll tell you that in this case you want to provide a description of the original resource represented by the digital object as opposed to notes that will tell you to provide any contextual history useful in identifying or describing the resource. Well in this case we want to indicate that these maps are part of a series of historic atlases published circa 1879. Okay, so basically that's the type of information you put in there. The English, uh, language I'm using is English. Now the dates. The date span I am going to be using in this particular exhibit. Let's say that the maps run from 1879 to 1890. Again we have covered how to use dates in earlier videos. If you refer to how to add and manage records in your collection that is the initial walkthrough and how to start using Vita. So as always I'm going to update my record before I leave my screen. So now you've created the record for the exhibit itself. So the next thing we want to do is add our labels and links. Now it's perfectly fine to leave this as it is. I mean you can change it if you want. Just make sure if you do change the home label or you want to relabel what next panel says then update before you leave. But I am not going to change anything here. I'm quite happy with it so I'm going to move on to my style. Now you have two options here on how you can choose your layout. You can use the pre-cant style sheets. If you recall in the example I showed you the ones I created I chose the black photo album. In this case I think I am going to stick with that because I'm going to be using images that are rather light and I want them to pop on the screen. But you can use there's a dove gray, a blue, a green and sand. Maybe one of these is more closer to your organizational colors. If none of these are appropriate or you don't like them then you have the option of adding your own SS or CSS file, upload your own style sheet. Again there's guides here to walk you through the process. As far as banners are concerned you can add your own banner as well. You upload it here. You can change the alignment and you can put your own header in. Again we walk through all these. If you need more information in more detail if you go to our Vita Toolkit help site you can see we have a manual on virtual exhibits and it will walk you through the whole process. Okay, you can also put in a favicon and you can add a footer. Just be uh, keep in mind that footers do take up real estate on your page so being um, lighter on text is better. Let's put in this is a footer. So we will see that once we create our exhibit it'll be at the bottom. Okay as always I am going to update all my choices 
and next I'm going to go and find the content that I want to put into my exhibit. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can search and identify your records either by the item number that's been assigned by the toolkit, by title, or if you have followed my numerous instructions on create groups, create groups, create groups, you go into advanced search, you scroll down to groups, and you go and select the group of records that you want to pull from. In this case, I have already created a group of old maps of Ontario. I'm going to go to that, and you can see all the maps that I may want to use for this exhibit are here. So I'm going to go and select the maps I want to include. Three, four, that's a duplicate, so I'm going to leave that out. I think that's a good selection. So then if you see here, there's add checked images, select all images, or if you want to change your mind, you can unselect them. But I have checked all the ones I want. So they are now aggregated for me. So the next thing I have to do is you have to create a panel in which to put these images in. So I'm going to go into add edit panel. And the first thing I want to do is give it a title, obviously. Let's put just the maps, keep it simple. Okay, now I have to choose my layout. Now if you recall, um, Brant County had used, I believe, a double column. And they also had, if you tend to have more photographs than you have text for, you can also choose a gallery view. And depending on the number of items or photographs that you want to put in, you can go down to quite a few, to only six per page with room for captions but I'm going to keep it simple and I'm just going to put the two column exhibit with the text beside the associated image. And if you want you can actually add a block of HTML. I am not going to do that right now but I am going to update my panel choice. And the next thing I want to do now is I want to go in and add my images. So I'm going to go here where it says add image and text block. We can add text as well, which we'll do after we choose our images. So I want everything here. Now, if you decide at any point that mm, maybe you don't want all these maps and simply don't click it off and it won't be entered into the exhibit. But I'm going to choose all of these and I'm going to add my images. So let's take a look at what we have so far. Well, there's my one page, and here are my images. Now that's kind of boring, so let's go in and kind of jazz things up a little. Let me get rid of that. Now I do want to add text, so before I go in and start um, tinkering with my layout, I'm going to go back into Add Image and Text Block, and up here I'm going to put in a little blurb. If we're dealing with maps, you're probably going to be serving a genealogical type of user. So let's put in searching for ancestors in Bruce and Gray counties. These maps might help. Okay, you can put as much in there as you want or as little, but this is just illustrates how this works. Now I'm going to go add my text and let's go and see what it looks like. Okay, well, where's my text? It is at the bottom, so I can go back and I can fix that by simply using the elevator key and moving it up to the top. And if I go back and check, there's my text there. But there's a bit more I want to do with this. I want to change how the images display on the page. So all you have to do is go into the edit button and you can change the size of the image. You can force it smaller. Again, there's guides here to walk you through that. I can change the caption. I'm not going to do that. I'm happy with it. But I do want to change how it is going to look. So I want my image on the left and I want my text on the right. So I'm going to pop my text in here. I'm 
update my picture and let's go and take a look at what we have. You can see I've got it staggered. So let's just do a few more. Again, you go back in and you go to the maps. So this is the page that you're working on. So you're going to click on that and I'm going to go in and edit. And I want my image on the right and my text on the left. This is a map of old gray county. Update my picture. Now let's go take a view. So you can see it's staggered. So let's just do one more. Go back into my page that I'm working on and go into my edit and I want to have the image on the left and the text on the right. Update my picture and let's go take a look. So you can see I've got my page, my first and only page. I have a little bit of contextual history about what these are and you can add text to your image and you can stagger them like I have. So basically that's how it formats. And you can see choosing the black background if you're dealing with lighter images helps them pop just a little. But again, you can upload a CSS tile sheet and you can customize it any way you wish. Okay, if you did want to add another page, as you can see there, I only had one page. If I go into Add and Edit Panels, I can go in and add another page. So say I wanted to put in um, the early or the history of early Bruce and Gray counties. So you add the page and then you do have to do the same thing you did when you initially started. You have to choose the style sheet. So in this case I might want a gallery or one image wide because I'm going to be adding more text. So if I choose that and I update the panel and I go into view I can see there's my second page. So then what I would do is follow the same process is I would have to go and add my content. Add images. So again you can go back and grab a group of images or you can select them ahead of time if you so wish. Let's just say I want to add just a couple of these. And let's see. I don't want to delete the page. You can also do that as well if you want to start over again. You can delete the panel or the page. In this case we're just working on the second page so the first one won't be touched. So if I go into here you can see I have just my two maps and I can go and do the same thing and there's my first page. So there are a few little more steps with creating an exhibit. As with anything, the more you do it, the more clear it'll get. So hopefully between this video and the manual we can walk you through it. It's a great way to um, showcase specific items in your collection and of course you set them on you set it up on your home site your Vita home site and you do that by going into your site management and again we have a video on how to set up your site and what you would do is go onto your search page and if you scroll down you can see that there is virtual exhibits to be featured, the Green Family Postcard Collection is chosen, and if I actually say I want to change that, I want to put the one I just did. I want to change my list of featured virtual exhibits, so if I click on this, I want to take, I want to add old maps, update my Vita site, go into my main menu and if I go on the training site then it will be added for me.
Okay, and here is the home page of our training site, and as you can see, there is the original virtual exhibit that I already had, and here's my old maps of Ontario. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. That's not how I want it to look. Well, all you have to do then is you go back in, you find your virtual exhibit, so you go into the link, and you click on Old Maps of Ontario, whatever exhibit you want. You go to your file tech, and you want to upload a thumbnail. So you click on thumbnails, and you want to add your file. So just bear with me, I have to go and find my thumbnails. Um, be the training materials. I had one of old maps. Well, let's pretend this is a map. I'm going to choose that. Oh no, there they are down there. Sogeen was part of the collection, so I'm going to go and choose that. And I'm going to start my upload. Continue. And now, if I go over here and if I refresh, you can see now I have my representation. And if I click on this, there's my exhibit. And if I go back, and if I click on the Green Family Postcard Collection, there's my exhibit there. So it's a great way to showcase items in your collection. It's a great, great way also if you are partnering with or you want to support um, local community groups, historical societies, you can go in and you can showcase the items they have. Perhaps you're taking care of the collection for them. Again, it's a great community outreach initiative. It's easy to create once you get to the hang of it. It's just remembering to go through the different steps here. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. Don't forget, there's the manual to follow through as well. If you do run into any problems or you have any technical issues, remember you can always contact us through help at vitatoolkit.ca. We have many more videos up to walk you through all the workflows in Vita, so don't forget to check that out as well as our ODW YouTube channel. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.